Hello, my name is Dr. Abraham Yen, and in this channel I go over problem solving strategies primarily in math competitions. In this video we're going to go over problem 3 from International Math Olympiad in 2025. Let n denote the set of positive integers. A function f from n to n is, is said to be bonza if f of a divides b to the power of a minus f of b to the power of f of a for all positive integers a and b. Determine the smallest real constant c for which f of n is less than or equal to cn for all bones of functions f and all positive integers n. So the first thing that I did was I tried to find as many bones of functions as I can. The condition that f of a divides b to the power of a minus f of b to the power of f of a can be obtained in two obvious uh, cases. One of them is f of a equals 1. So that would be one example. If this one is 1, 1 divides everything. Or the second one is if this one is 0. So f of b equals uh, b. So if f of b equals b for every b or f of a equals a for every a, these two functions satisfy the property that we are given. Next, I tried f of n equals cn to see what I get. So if I have f of n equals cn, I would get ca divides b to the power of a minus cb to the power of ca. So that means c must divide b to the power of a, which means c must be 1, because this would have, have to happen for every b. So really the only function f of n equals cn that works is in fact just f of n equals n. So, so far, I only have these two examples, f of n equals constant of 1 and f of n equals n. So I decided to assume that f is neither one of these two and then see what I can get from there. So the first natural thing that I did was I replaced a and b equals a fixed number n. So that gives you n to the n minus f of n to the power of f of n. So that tells us that f of n divides n to the power of n. So I'm going to use this one for special cases of n. The best property choice that I can use is for a prime p. So f of a prime divides prime p to the power of p. So that means f of a prime p is equal to p to some power. This is if p is prime. So why am I using this for primes? Because f of p dividing, uh, dividing p to the power of p gives you an immediate, immediate uh, consequence, which is f of p equals p to the power of k. Now, the problem is f of n is less than or equal to c times n. What does it mean? It means f of p can't be really f of, uh, p squared or more for infinitely many p's. So I wanted to see why this cannot happen. Why is it that f of p can't be greater than or equal to p squared for infinitely many p? Let's try and assume that f of p is at least p squared. So that means p squared would have to divide f of p. Let's take this one and then use the fact that f of p would have to divide b to the power of a, which is p in this case, minus f of b to the power of f of p. Well, we know that f of p is a power of p, so that tells us that b to the power of p is congruent to f of b to the power of p to some power. This is mod p to some power. This is f of p. Now, it's not very easy to find b to the power of p mod p to the power of k, but we can easily find it mod p. By Fermat's little theorem, b to the power of p is the same as f of b to the power of k. p to the power of k can be replaced by p mod p, and that tells us that b is congruent to f of b mod p. Now, note that this is really going to imply that f of b is equal to b if p is larger than, let's say, f of b plus b. If p is large, then these two would have to be equal. In other words, even if f of p is equal to p for infinitely many values of p, then f of b would have to be equal to b. So that means if f of p is greater than or equal to p for infinitely 
many t, then f of b is equal to b for every b, which is exactly the function that we already knew. So we're going to assume that f of p is in fact equal to 1 for every large p. So what does it mean? It means after a point, f of p is equal to 1. So let's assume that f of p is equal to 1 for all p larger than some n. So let's just say at some point f of p isn't 1 and after that point f of p is 1. So let's suppose f of p is not equal to 1 and p is the largest prime. Satisfying this condition. So now let's write down the same condition and then see what happens. So we know we have we know that f of p would have to divide b to the power of p minus f of b to the power of f of p. So we have this one. Now we know that f of p is again a power of p. So this means b is congruent to f of b mod p. So this is really nothing new. Now we know that if b is a prime more than p, then f of b is equal to 1. And that tells us that b would have to be 1 mod p. So what we just showed is that primes that are more than p would have to be 1 mod p. But that doesn't make sense because if p is more than 1, then there is a prime p b more than p such that p is congruent to 2 mod p, for example, by Trishley theorem. And that is a contradiction. So, so far we showed that f of p is in fact equal to 1 if p greater than 2 is a prime. Okay, so that's interesting. So everything after 2 is going to give us uh, 1. So now let's look at what happens if I rewrite the condition. So I have f of a divides b to the power of a minus f of b to the power of f of a. So let's uh, try uh, replacing b by a prime t. So I have f of a divides b to the power of a minus 1 to the power of f of a. This is if p uh, b greater than 2 is a prime. Well, we know that f of a and b would have to be relatively prime then because this is relatively prime to b. So that means gcd of f of a and b would have to be 1. What does that mean? It means f of b f of a is relatively prime to every odd prime so that tells us that f of a would have to be a power of 2 for every positive integer a okay so the structure of the function is getting very much simpler than what we initially thought so it would have to be 2 to some power so let's now write down the condition again so we have 2 to the power of g of a must divide b to the power of a minus f of b, which is 2 to the power of g of b, to the power of f of a, which is 2 to the power of g of a. Now, notice that this guy would have to be 2 at some point. g of a isn't 0 for every a. So I would have 2 divides b to the a minus 2 to the power of g of b uh, times 2 to the power of g of a for some a. Now, let's see what happens. Well, if b is odd, then this guy would have to be odd. So in other words, if b is odd, then because the first term is odd, the second term would have to be odd as well, which means g of b would have to be 0. So in other words, f of b is just 1. So let's now write down the condition that we have. So we have two possibilities. If a is odd, 
the condition is f of a divides b to the a minus f of b to the power of f of a. This is obvious because f of a is in fact equal to 1. So now let's assume that a is even. So if a is even, the condition is 2 to the power of g of a divides b to the power of a minus 2 to the power of f of, or rather, g of b times 2 to the power of g of a. So this is the condition that I need to prove. Now, let's see what happens if g of b is 0 and what happens if g of b is, in fact, not 0. So there are two possibilities. If g of b isn't 0, that means 2 to the power of g of a must divide b to the power of a minus 2 to the power of g of a times 2 to the power of uh, g of a. Now, this exponent is going to be larger than this exponent. That's pretty easy to check, and this would have to be b. So g of a is less than or equal to g of b times 2 to the power of g of a, because this guy is at least 2 to the power of g of a, and g of a is less than or equal to 2 to the power of g of a. So that means this is valid if 2 to the power of g of a divides b to the power of a. So this would have to happen for every b when g of b isn't 0. So, so far I showed that if g of b is not 0, then 2 to the power of g of a would have to divide b to the power of a. Now, let's see what happens if g of b is in fact 0. If g of b is 0, then I would have 2 to the power of g of a would have to divide b to the power of a minus 1. Because this, hap this happens for every uh, a, then that means that b is odd. Because at least one of these values is 2 to a positive number because we assume that f of n is not exactly 1. So that means b is odd. So now, what is the smallest power of b that appears, power of 2 that appears in b to the power of a minus 1? By lifting the exponent lemma, the largest power of 2 that appears in b to the power of a minus 1 is going to be v2 of b squared minus 1 plus v2 of a minus 1. This is if a is even. And we already know what happens if a is odd, because when a is odd, then um, f of a is just 1. So that's not really the interesting case. Now, what's the smallest value of this? v2 of b squared minus 1 is at least 3 if b is odd. So this tells us that v2 of b to the power of a minus 1 is at least v2 of a plus 2. This v2 of a is the exponent of 2 that appears in the prime factorization of a. So bottom line is 2 to the power of g of a is at most 2 to the power of v2 of a plus 2, which means g of a is at most v2 of a plus 2. So this is the other thing that we obtain. Now, let's see when the first one uh, occurs. So when, the, when does the first one occur? We have 2 to the power of g of a divides b to the power of a. This would have to be for every even b. Okay, so let's see what happens with that. Well, if we replace b by 2, which would really give us the smallest value of the power, we get 2 to the power of g of a must divide 2 to the power of a, which means g of a would have to also be less than or equal to a. Well, a is 2 to the power of v2 of a. So really, in most cases, g of a is automatically going to be less than or equal to 2 to the power of v2 of a, because 2 to the power of v2 of a is already less than um, or rather greater than uh, v2 of a plus 2, unless a is exactly equal to 
2. So if a is exactly equal to 2, then we would have g of 2 would have to be less than or equal to 2. So we have this one. And in every other case, g of a would have to be less than or equal to v2 of a plus 2. And also, it would have to be greater than or equal to 1 based on the discussion that we had. So putting this all together, we conclude that f of n is equal to 2 to the power of g of n, and g of n is between 1 and v2 of n plus 2, and g of 2 is less than or equal to 2, greater than or equal to 1. And you can easily check that any function satisfying these also satisfies the conditions. Now, how do we get the C that they gave us? So this tells us that f of n is equal to uh, 2 to the power of g of n, which is maximum 2 to the power of v2 of n plus 2, which is 4 times 2 to the power of v2 of n, and that is less than or equal to 4n. Now, the function defined by 1 if n is odd, uh, 2 if n is 2, and 2 to the power of v2 of n plus 2. If 2 divides n and n is at least 4, satisfies the conditions of the problem, which means the answer is c equals 4 because if I look at f of 2 to any power, it would be 2 to the power of the k plus 2, which is 4 times 2 to the power of k. This is for k greater than or equal to 2. And that brings me to the end of this video. I will see you in the next video.